This little iPhone attachment lets me see in the dark. Here, let me show you. I'm gonna plug this into my phone. I'm gonna start up this app and I'm gonna turn out the lights. This is the Thermalmaster P3, a thermal camera that sees infrared instead of visible light. And that means it can see even when the lights go out. It just looks a lot different and a little spooky. Let me turn the lights back on and I'll tell you a little more about it. So the Thermalmaster P3, this is it. It plugs right into the bottom of your smartphone. It has USB-C and uh, in the box it also came with this lightning adapter so if you have an older phone or iPad you could probably use it on there. I haven't tested that so don't take my word for it but hopefully that works. Uh, in the box it also came with this cable which lets you kind of uh, get that away from your phone if you need to have it not connected directly to your phone so that's nice. And it had this case which is useful because if you're gonna put this away you don't want things to touch the sensor inside of there. And this is an interesting device. Thermalmaster emailed me about this. Uh, I've had a relationship with them for a couple years now, and I've tested a few of their devices that actually never made it to market. I still use, I still use this Topton, I think, what is it, the TC004. I use this one because uh, it's handy to get a quick reading of something without having to pull out your phone at all. But it is nice to have one that's integrated to your phone because I can record on here and then immediately send the data over to my computer. Uh, and there's also a lot more analysis in here. And the app is, uh, it does a lot more than just one of these things. But it is nice to have that. Uh, but I just heard my 3D printer finish printing. So I figured we can get a feel for how it works with this Tempmaster app. When I loaded up the Tempmaster app, it had a weird uh, little tutorial that looked like it had a guy like slouched over, uh, maybe falling asleep or something. That was a little strange, but let me plug this in. And when you plug it in, you hear a little click. The click means that the little IR sensor inside is like turning on or setting itself, calibrating. I don't know what that does, but all IR devices seem to do that. So whatever they're doing, that's what they're doing. I have the set in red hot mode, so you can see it's kind of blobby and amorphous. But if I look at something like down there, that is my rack of computer stuff. Come on, focus, there we go. You can see that there's some hot things in there like the uh, network switch, which according to this is 44, 45 degrees Celsius on the outside. So really quick, you can get an idea for how good the uh, refresh rate is on here. I, it seems like 20 frames per second or 15 frames per second. I, I don't know exactly, uh, but we can look at my 3D printing setup. I just 3D printed something inside of the Live Bees printer. And you'll notice that uh, when I look at this, I'm just seeing a big kind of amorphous blob of, of heat inside. Glass is actually not uh, able to be seen through for infrared. So that's something to think about when you're looking at stuff through an infrared camera like this. If I open up this door, this glass door that we can see through, now you can see the heated bed and a lot of reflections on my phone. Uh, but there you go. That's, uh, that's the thing I just printed. It's a little adapter for a framework expansion module. And there's the uh, the heated nozzle at 115 degrees Celsius, according to this. I'm sure inside of there it's a little hotter. I was printing ASA, which needs a little more heat. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the basic overview. You can see little hot spots for devices in my network rack over there, like the Pi that's running my backup NAS, and the UPS down at the bottom is a little warm. And what is that that's hot? Oh, that's... <laughs> That's the uh, another thing to think about when you're looking at a uh, thermal camera. That is a mirror finish, and it is actually showing me the side of the printer. So when I look at this, I can see that visually, but also the thermal, the thermal image of it is reflected as well. If you're looking at something that's shiny and you want to get the surface, like if I wanted to see how hot this surface actually is, I would need to put something over it, whether that's black spray paint or Kapton tape or electrical tape, something that is slightly thermally conductive, but also not, uh, not reflective, something that's emissive. And uh, there's my foot, you can see down here. There's, uh, I guess, my very hot leg. Uh, that sounded weird, but anyway, there's my legs. They included a little, where is it? There's a warranty card here. There is a quick start guide that has it, it's like 10 pages. It's not much. There's like 20 languages in here. That's why it's only like 10 pages and it's a pretty thick book still. But it does have a little emissivity chart. I don't think I would carry this around with me. I would just look it up online. But there's a lot of things in electronics especially that you might need to check uh, thermally 
to see if a chip is getting too hot or if your cooling is not good, like over here. That's my little Zigbee outlet, and apparently it stays a little warm. It's not hot, but 35 degrees, so there's some wasted power in there somewhere for whatever is running the Zigbee circuit, probably. Probably an ESP32 or something. But one of the things that attracted me to the P3, and one of the reasons why I told Thermalmaster I would like to test one, is uh, its ability to focus. So if you look at this ring, the ring is actually functional. That is a focus ring. So let me set this up on a tripod, and I'll show you what I mean with the PCB back here that we've been working on. So this is a prototype of the Switchberry. It's a PTP aware network switch and we're trying to get Sync E networking support. Anyway, that's all besides the point. Cool thing that I'll be talking about at some point in the future. Uh, but we're building this PCB, well, not we, someone else is building it and I am testing it here. Uh, but one of the things that you always wanna check with your electronics designs is how how well it is handling uh, power and sometimes you might put power in the wrong places or you might need to cool something that you didn't expect you needed to cool. So being able to check everything with thermals is nice. And when I want to get in really close, so let me zoom in over here. So getting really close, you can see things get a little bit blurry. So it's hard to see exactly where those hot spots are. And you can also see some reflectivity on, uh, on these things because they are uh, metal. But if I get in really close, it's blurry you can adjust the focus here and see exactly what circuits are getting hot. So that is that is probably the main reason I was interested in this P3, the ability to kind of do macro IR work with it because of the focusing capabilities. And that can be really handy because like right here, there's, there's a little IC. It's not even an IC. That looks like just a passive... Uh, no, it is an IC. Uh, there's a little IC right here that's getting hot. It's, uh, it's not super hot, but it's 36 degrees. If you pump in too much heat to something like that, maybe it will fail prematurely. So it's a handy way to see if there's parts of your design that uh, you might need to rethink um, how they work or how much power you get to it. So the ability to focus with this, uh, this focus ring is extremely handy and that is probably the main reason why I think an electronics person would consider something like this. It's just handy to have. And considering the price of other IR solutions, this is not incredibly expensive when you consider how good it is at this uh, macro work. And I think it gets down to what? Let's see how close we can get here. It gets down to, wow, that is, we are, we are up close and personal here. It gets down to a, a, like 10 or 20 millimeters. I think it said eight millimeters on the box. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, it's extremely handy for that. You can see how blurry it is when I'm coming out now. I gotta, so I need to focus all the way back out just so I can see things again because I was in so tight. So it did disconnect there momentarily. That's the longest I've used it. I, I've had this on for about 15 minutes now. So maybe, uh, maybe don't use this for 15 minutes. And the uh, air conditioner just came on. So let me take a pause here and uh, we'll come back and I'll show you some app features that I am uh, very happy that they've added for this version of the app versus some of the older stuff that I was using in the past. So the app has uh, auto ranging or negative 20 to 150 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees to 550. That's helpful if you're dealing in extremely high temperature environments. You can tap this button to kind of recalibrate it, I guess. It, that, it makes that clicking sound, which I guess is the recalibration. It has uh, a pretty simple setup. Earlier versions of the app were a lot harder to use, so I'm glad that they kind of went back to this style where you can just, um, add a point for measuring a specific spot on here. So you can set a point and it'll give you the temperatures uh, and you can set multiple points, I guess three total. And then you can put markers on it. So that's helpful. You can draw things, I think. Yeah, you can draw stuff, put a circle on here. And all of these things can be, um, can be captured either in recording or in a still frame. So this is handy if you're trying to get documentation for something to save off for your notes later or something along those lines. You have different abilities for uh, you know black hot, white hot, so different uh, ways of showing the thermal image. Red hot, rainbow, jungle, aurora, sita. I don't know what that one is for. Seems Italian. Dim light, gold, lava, and medical. I usually either do rainbow or iron red just because uh, rainbow is kind of the traditional one that I remember from a long time ago on the earliest ones of these. And iron red is helpful for just kind of showing hot spots glowing. Uh, and then there's, those are the kind of the different ways of filtering it. Another cool feature that I like on here is you can show the actual camera and you can put it anywhere on the screen, which is handy. I 
I think you can, yeah, you can make it bigger or smaller. You can also, you could try to overlay it, I guess. It, uh, it, it doesn't quite match up there. It'd be nice to be able to like crop and overlay it, but you can set the transparency of that too. So you could have this, and if you're like screen recording, you could capture it as well. Uh, but that's handy to have. And then there's some settings. You can rotate the image. Um, so you can mirror the image. You can put a scale on it uh, to show the temperature scale and change those settings as well. Uh, turn that off. Uh, you can change the contrast, you know, the brightness, all those kind of settings. Anyway, those are the typical settings. And then the app has a few settings. I'm not going to go through them all here. It keeps showing me that there's a version update, and I've done it twice now, but uh, I don't know why it keeps doing that. But it seems like it might be either the update's not applying correctly, or I don't know what's going on. But there are some other settings in here for uh, shutters and, and how the image calibrates and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of the app. It's simple enough, but also complex enough that you can do most of the things that you'd ever want to do. And this is where this, this shines a little bit because you can have more temperature points and you can set things up and capture things a little more easily. So I like that experience. Uh, in the photo mode, you can go back and see pictures you've taken. So here's the picture I took earlier showing the hot spots. And uh, yeah, so there you go. You know, my ring apparently is a good reflector because it is definitely not freezing cold. So there you go, the P3. It's uh, also handy if you're just looking at your house and trying to see your walls and see if there's any need for you know, thermal remediation, insulation, that kind of thing. And right now they have it for sale on their website for $279, which is a, a fair price for it. There's the official specs, so eight millimeters to 80 meters, and it says it does 512 by 384, which is pretty high resolution for an IR camera. For myself, I'll probably keep using this guy more often just because it's handy and I have the funds to buy one of these that's separate. But if you want one that's more portable or sits out of the way, for example, I have mine, my other thermal cameras in there, you can just stick it like that and it takes up less space. So there you go. Uh, this is not like an official review. I'm not an IR expert or anything by any means, but I definitely recommend this if you want a good thermal camera that works uh, on your phone. And supposedly also on your desktop, there might be a way to interface this by USB-C. I haven't tested that, but that would be nice to do at some point as well. But there you have it.